this last week or so. Let's see if we're even showing up. I have to always reload. We have, um, you know, a connectivity thing. I've got all the bars necessary. And yet yesterday, weren't we fritzing a lot? And I've got all the bars on the phone and uh, hit the bars. <laughs> and so now let's just see if that all that goodness worked. If we're here together and we're ready Touched by prayer, I see that one, and I see, I don't have all the names in front of me, but I'm glad you're here. Hey, I'm glad we, we're we connecting. We have some important work to do because we have a very traumatized canvas, and I've been laying the foundations for you guys. Hey, Tessie for Trump, I saw your comments yesterday, but I, hey, Greg, and Liberty, thank you, Liberty Joe, for acknowledging me this morning and doing your readings. That's so good. Tessie, I, 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 when I'm really, really focusing on what I want to say, I can't always respond to comments, but it sounded like by the end of the broadcast, Swim Robin and Tessie Trump, that you understood what I was trying to say. I'm laying a foundation, and there's the Gregors, the Gregors Harvey. The, I wrote this song called Beyond Every Fear, and it's about how beyond every fear, there's a land we long to explore and to find out, in, in essence, what we were created for. But that's not the lyrics. It's kind of, um, you know, that's kind of a tacky lyric. But it's kind of cool how beyond every fear is the reality of what you were created to do and where the greatest power of your life is going to be. So I'm going to resurrect. Um, scope is still being yucky. You know, I don't know how to help you guys with that because I do have a five bars of goodness and I do have um, five bars on my phone. The only thing I can say is while I'm up here in the woods, um, good job, Tessie. Um, assume I'm on podcast. <laughs> and if you have to just listen, you'll catch a few, um, you'll catch a few, you know, images to help you see what I'm doing with the painting. Yes, we are gonna do that Wednesday Night Warfare. Why do we have to sit around and wait for a false flag? Why do we have to sit around and wait for the enemy to unleash something new on us? We're going to learn how to really take uh, take control and circumvent what he wants to do. We're going to take his plans and insert ours instead. So part of the plan, and I reached out to some of you, uh, Greg, to say, you know, it seems like we're getting some, you know, indications that, that they want to make this next season just even more special for us all, even more traumatizing for America and the world just you know <laughs> and you know we could sit back and wait for that but I'm I'm voting I'm voting that we that we do something different and um, glad you can see this on Facebook cool all right so we're going to in our it however it works whoever's leading it whoever is together uh, Andrea and I started a thing and it does it's not limited to us we're going to start Wednesday Night Warfare, where we are going to uh, rule and reign. And, you know, it's hard to play guitar with red paint all over your fingers. So that may cut my music moment short here. But um, I'm going to resurrect and relearn to play 
my song Beyond Every Fear. Yes, I'll take the chance and follow through the shadowlands and find you beyond every fear. Yeah, so we're gonna do it, right? We're gonna do this thing. We're gonna um, become an army to un unfalse the flag. Okay, why should we sit around? And I, and I told the folks on the prayer thing that I exactly a year ago I had a dream, and I'm not like super prolific, but I do take them seriously when when I'm you know cognizant enough to remember them. And it was a very clear dream that the Q post that that mentioned prepare for false flags became our prayer became our prayer alert, and that then we started putting out to our networks. Okay, we've got the alert. They are trying to do something. Let's put a stop to that. And I reached out to Dave, and he said, "Yeah, you know, there's really no telling how how much we can we can change the world, and we haven't really ex explored that yet, have we? Have, we really haven't. And so we're going to learn to govern over our emotions, our traumas, our history, um, the chaos around us, in us, and we're going to learn how to show up and and knock that stuff off, right?" And we are force multipliers, and there's, you know, we, we really have a lot of agreement here. I just love this tribe, especially when I look around at so many traumatized tribes that just are having a hard time, you know, not leaving the, the clutches of the things that they think are going to keep them safe, right, externally. And, um, and so anyway, uh, then in, and then uh, Dave shared that a dream out last year, and my mentions got exciting for like, 15 minutes, you know, <laughs> so that's okay. I was my 15 minutes of Twitter fame. I'm fine with that. In any event, look forward to some music because I did write a song about beyond every fear and beyond every loss is the thing that you actually are really longing for. And it's funny because the fear, fear is such a visceral thing that, uh, you know, it teaches us stay away, be afraid, be very afraid. And it's interesting because just about a week and a half ago, I dreamt, it was really weird, I was on a peninsula, a little sandy peninsula, and it was kind of a funky dream. I was very busy. I was a busy woman in my dream. And um, and uh, I, I dreamt that once I got all my moving around and whatever that was all about with the people, I'm doing things and trying to get fit in and get to my stuff and all that, then I'm in a, I'm in a peninsula. And I look over and there's a huge, huge cobra. I mean, very, you know, massive, like, and thick with a, with a head, you know, its, it's jaws were open. And it kind of had a pointy face and it was just, I mean, maybe four feet from me. And I didn't even have time to, um, to know what to do. I couldn't get out. I couldn't. So I, I ducked down like this and was waiting, you know, for it to go. And, uh, Nothing happened. Nothing. Totally silent. Nothing. Nothing happened. And then I was aware of some kind of four-legged smaller creature that was, you know, vicious. You know, somewhere between a porcupine and a, I don't know, mini woolly mammoth. I don't know. It was weird. Same thing happened. I saw that coming and nothing happened. And in the dream, I don't know why I'm telling you this. But in the dream, you know, you're so react reactive to the threat that it's hard to calm down, right? And as I thought about that, I thought, wow, I was just fine. I mean, I literally looked that thing right in the jaw. And I, you know, my reaction was, ah, you know, because I, my perspective is that that's really scary, dangerous, right? But I was just fine. I was totally fine. And then it occurred to me, I need to now kill those things instead of just being okay and being traumatized by the close call. Have you guys have experienced that before? You get traumatized by your close calls. Like God just saved you 
and you're just so busy going, wow, that just was so close. Oh, you know, I mean, that you relive it over and over and over as out of a, a state of weakness. And, uh, and this has a lot to do with overcoming trauma because even what we've survived, we tend to still give so much power to. And then afterwards, I thought about it and I thought, hey, I shouldn't leave those things running around, even though they didn't hurt me. I, I think I should just go kill them now. And that's part of what we're learning to do right now. And we're learning also to, um, to look the scariest things in the eye and go, wow, that totally did not kill me. I remember the first time I had to really uh, confront an addicted person in our family system. And my whole life I had been little, you know, you know me as little Julie Lavender from Bakersfield, California. But I was not, at that point, I was little perfect Julie Lavender from Bakersfield, California. You know, the one you could count on to be the sweetest thing and do all the things and do the Jesus thing. And, you know, and, and these, this family member was counting on me to be that same little Julie Lavender who enabled the system. And in that moment, I became the evilest person in the all of a sudden, I, it was the craziest thing. I went from being the perfect, most compliant, most amazing, you're the best thing, and you're our little gift from God, and blah, blah, blah. And then, to it was the weirdest thing. And of course, all the shame comes, and all because you hear the things you intuitively know you're afraid to hear once you face your fear, right? Your fear has a name, it has a story, and our thing is like, if I deal with that, I'm going to hear this. Well, guess what I did, and I did. And I, and the strangest thing happened to me because I was also getting strengthened and connecting with people and developing resources for this confrontation and getting help, getting strengthened, getting around healthy people. And so I wasn't alone and isolated, but I noticed that one of the things that was so beautiful is I thought to myself, oh my gosh, my worst fear just happened. And it didn't kill me. I'm here. I actually just lived through my total worst fear. I just lived through the cobra with its mouth wide open. I mean, striking at me. I mean, I in the dream, I was ready to feel its jaws and this other thingy, whatever that was. And, uh, and then, you know, you have this reaction. I'm going to tell you about it, and we're going to go to the painting. You have this reaction of shock whenever there's a strong emotional thing. And I usually, typically, years ago, I had a, a spin cycle that I always had to go through. I would get very fuzzy, wouldn't see very clearly, couldn't connect, could not hear very much, uh, was smiling, and but hidden away, very drawn in, very in, triggered to withdraw and regress. And then I would start cleaning. And I would start getting obs obsessing, and I'd go around the house and obsess over everything to try to create safety. And I noticed that every time I had to deal with an issue, I had my spin cycle I had to go through. And when I was um, younger, um, it, it really had a life. <clears throat> and I that my first 24 hours are going to be the craziest in dealing with facing the trauma or facing the issue or dealing with the thing. I knew I'd be a little nutty for 24 hours. But when I noticed that it had a, a sort of a, an arc, things are brought up in you and you go a little crazy, you need to know that your brain actually has a spin cycle that it takes you through to help you process shock and, and inner triggers. And, you, and your greatest degree of discomfort will be in the first 24 hours. But then, you know, I've learned in the, to say to my situations, like if there's, you know, I wound up getting into a, you know, relationship or two that didn't didn't end the way I would have wanted it to or carry on the way I would have wanted it to, then you kind of go back and you, you, you kind of relive stuff and you get stuck with the, what could I have done differently. And I was able to say to myself, you know what, my brain's trying to find a new way to think because this person has been moved to the periphery of my life. So I bet, just give me three weeks and I'm not even going to, um, these obsessive thoughts are pretty much going to work their way out, especially if you have all these healthy behaviors going in you and you have good con and you're not rehearsing trauma and just talking yourself into it and you have healthy people who can reflect 
on some of the situations that maybe you've gotten yourself into that you need a better perspective on, right? And gosh darn, if it wasn't true that in about three weeks, instead of this person walking through my mind regularly and creating this low grade anxiety and worry, did I do it right? And you know, and was I, did I hear from God? It, it really did, my brain really did work through that process and out the other side, where it refiled this precious uh, family member in Christ in a different location. And God is going to, as he heals you, refile things, file down the points of them and refile them. And when you confront what we're going to talk about, you're going to find you go through spin cycles because your brain literally has been wired for the a certain people in your life, certain ways, certain behaviors, certain avoidances. And when you change that, it has to rewire. And you got to give it a little time. I mean, you can stand the brain, but you do get to re, you do get to give yourself time to heal and rewire every time you confront one of your deepest fears. Isn't that cool? Doesn't that give you hope that next time you get kind of, you know, uh, stuck where I always was, and now I'm reacting the same way, and I'm still a scaredy cat? No, 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 no. Mm -mm. You need to know there are processes in your brain by which it goes through its spin cycle, and it sorts out. It's resorting, and the more we give it truth and love and nurturing and stewardship, and we and we tell tell our brain what we choose to think and believe, and we receive God's healing, the more you know the centrif centrifugal force begins to send those forces out to the periphery of your life and your function, and not right in the center of it. Isn't that a beautiful thing? So, do you guys remember at the fair there was a a, a thing um, where you could they have those centrifugal force things and you can go in and, and stand on the wall and then they start spinning and then you can't move. Yeah, well, that's what that reminds me of. Okay, let's get to this. All right, this is, this is our trauma. We talked about our purpose, that our purpose precedes our trauma. Your purpose, what God's planted in you, the universe of what he's called you into and to be, is the thing, it was the first thought about you, was the first plan for you, was the first intent, the first cause, the first if you will, offensive move of God was you and everything in you was God's weapon. You are one of God's weapons and all the universe of who you are and how you got here is the purpose of what God's doing. And it's right in the middle of this and we're, we were talking about ourselves in this analogy as sort of a universe or a continent and right in the heart of who you are. This is where the enemy goes with his traumas to, to damage you. And, and the first step I said, and it took me a few days, uh, just because I have to let a canvas kind of open itself up. Um, we, I needed you to think about the themes of the kinds of things that have happened to you, why they've happened, how they all have a similar message. There's usually one or two key messages that your traumas and your experiences have taught you to believe. We've talked about this. So I asked you to journal. I asked you to pay attention. Okay. Now, then I talked about how purpose precedes trauma, that you, you're one of God's weapons. You're one of his arrows. He, you were you were his like uh, I think I'm gonna change the world I can put this DNA in the earth with this purpose and just watch what happens and over family lines and the enemy's smart he knows that so he goes after it and yesterday I hacked up the canvas right in the heart of its purpose I even added some more red you know so it'd be nice and creepy and gooey and uh, now my friend it is time to make reparations and we did this last year, and I did it a little bit differently, but it's such a powerful thing. You know, if you really think about this, there's not a lot you can do for this kind of thing on a canvas, right? Um, but, you know, there's this thing called duct tape. And if you're an artist, by very nature of being an artist, you are most inspired by the limitations that are placed on you. I know this. My son was the most creative of all. When I, he'd be, he would be jumping in his seat, I'd say, don't jump. And he'd say, well, fine, then I'm going to sway. And I'd say, don't sway. And he'd say, well, fine, then I'm going to fidget. And I'd say, don't fidget. He would say, fine, then I'm going to uh, skittle. Fine, then I'm going to drum. And my kid could find a way to outthink every limitation that was placed on him. And he was a man, he's a mechanical engineer type. And so he... <laughs> 
He found a way to rethink every limitation, and it made him ultimately very creative and intelligent. Okay? And so the limitations placed on your life, the canvas of your life, the wasted years, the, the uh, people that, um, that have harmed you, the, the, the memories, you know, the, the broken relationships, the, the way you think, what you've never done, what you didn't think you could do. You know, um, I personally prefer if in an art project that somebody, get, somebody limits me to what I can and can't do, what's possible and not possible for me. Because my biggest possibility is always the idea that whatever they give me, I'm going to find a way to make it beautiful. And that's how I approach it. That's how I approach it. I want you to approach it. Your limitations are actually your greatest point of creativity and opportunity. So you probably think to yourself, and our nations, let's talk this, because you know, this is not just for you this time. Our nation's been traumatized. I, I don't even know what to do with the amount of reports of traumatized people. I'm hearing about school board meetings and people crying and terrified and teachers wanting to quit because they're and angry at their school districts that they might want to go back. And people are absolutely obsessed with, with the physical sense that somehow something is going to keep them safe. And if, and you know, the catastrophizing of everything, I don't even know what to do with that right now, but I do know that it's going to really, really matter that you're set free. And it's going to really, really matter if we're going to do this Wednesday warfare thing and we're going to uh, pray over our country. We need to be people who know how to deal with trauma and know how to overcome trauma. And we need to become repairers of the breach. Okay? That's what we're going to talk about right now. Is The first thing is when you understand that the greatest threat is you and that you believe some things because of your trauma, and if you dare, and you believe some things because of our national trauma, what's going to keep you safe? What you might do to hurt other people? Oh my gosh, maybe you're a racist. Uh, the world's going to fall apart. It's just so awful and so terrible. We have believed some things because of trauma. And those things control us. So as we decide that our limitations, therefore our traumas, are going to make us in really, really creative, we're going to come up with ways to create beauty beauty out of our traumas. I now, I now look back at the most traumatizing, difficult things in my life when I share my story and the most painful things as the most glorious things. And I, I know it's hard. I mean, Satan, I don't think God gets up and says, wow, you got a big purpose. Let's, let's just destroy your life. And that doesn't come from him. And some people have a little bit more uh, to work with in recovery because they're from family lines and situations where God has already done a lot of healing. But say you're from a family that's just pockmarked with problem after problem and generation after generation after generation. Congratulations! You won the lottery of purpose. And you actually are going to become the generals. The generals. You're the perfect example of the kind of person that God needs right now because we are the most fragmented, screwed up family, sexual abuse, physical abuse, ritual abuse, media abuse. Oh my gosh, it's it's worse than we thought, right? We thought, oh, great awakening, hooray, God, you know, and then like seriously. This thing here in you is going to make you, it, it gives you the stripes of, of, of sergeant and just to start out with and and the, the the chance for real advancement and authority in the kingdom the degree to which you've been hurt is a degree to which you you stand in authority over a situation did you know that one time the lord told me you know that person really hurt you didn't they and i was like yes they did and he said that means you have great authority and in, in prayer did you know that I'm wanting to know if you want me to, you want to join in the accuser or you want to advocate for their destiny? And I was like, you want me to advocate for their destiny? I don't think so. But you know what happened? When I realized that, I realized how creative that is. So creative. This limitation of what that person did to me in that church. One time, and I know I'm, I'm, I'm we're going to get to this. Okay, I'm going to read you a scripture. And we're going to start, we're going to start rebuilding. But you need to see this. One time I was in a, a meeting and because we believed in revival, 
they uh, they trotted us out as heretics openly, openly had a big public meeting in the in the in the most well known church in town. Called us out, my husband and me, and said we were evil heretics. They listened to a lot of the Bible Answer Man at the time, and this lady stood up in front of the whole meeting and said, "Julie, come back to Jesus!" <laughs> right in front of everybody. The whole church, the whole community. I was mortified, shamed, so much shame in my life at the time. And a few months later, when I got invited to sing at that church, which I did not want to do, the Lord said to me, Julie, if you'll go and release healing, you'll have great authority in the spiritual realm if you'll forgive and heal. And I went, that's creative. And the funny thing was, on the way to sing, I bumped into that woman right before I was supposed to go and sing in front of the church that held me up with the big A on my chest because I believed in revival and the Holy Spirit. And I saw her. I was absolutely terrified and mortified. She was the big cobra in the corner. And I, and I just said, I just, I don't know what, just war marched right up to her. And I said, I just want you to know that I forgive you. And she goes, oh, for what? And I said, for humiliating me in front of the whole church. I just want you to know I forgive you. And I bless you. And I'm like, now I think I'm going to go repair a breach or two. Now I think I'm going to go release something. You have, depending on your level of pain and trauma, you have the greatest level of authority in the kingdom of God. So here we are with a traumatized cam canvas, very limited you know, because this now has become a weak spot, okay? You can see how it, it bows in and out from there now. But but in, in our determination that we are going to be repairers, we up major in our, in our authority, in the spirit. And I can tell you it's absolutely true. When I went to sing in that church, the, the, the anointing, you know, the Jesus bomb was so intense, and I sat there and bawled my eyes out doing this worship thing during there. It was very, you know, Presbyterian church. My, my, my daughter calls them Pribestrians. It was the Pribestrian church, and, um, and I was doing the offertory, but I was doing a worship piece, and I was playing on the piano. And you got to realize I, was, I also dealt with stage fright. So there I am having stage fright and pain, and intercession, and I had been humiliated in front of the whole church openly, okay? And I'm there. I'm like, and I hadn't even gotten so much healing from shame. And I am telling you as, as, as clear as day, there was a portal from heaven into that place, and there was business transacted for the mercy of God for, for, on a level I don't even understand. I've seen it over and over and over. The degree of our traumatization and the degree to which we, be, we are repaired, we make reparation, we make reparation, we repair. We get repaired and we repair. Get ready for major level authority and impact in the spirit because behind your trauma and your fear is your purpose. So let's, and this is the thing that came to mind today. You know, I never really know what's going to happen in these things. So you guys are cool to hang out with me. But it says here, Isaiah 58, it says, uh, you know, it's, a, it's beautiful. I could go on and on and on. But it says if you, it says if you're um, bringing the homeless poor into your house and the naked and covering them and not hiding and running away, your light will break forth like the dawn. Your recovery will speedily spring forth. I don't think you need 30, 40 years to get healed by in at all. You need determination, understanding, and you need to know that behind your biggest trauma is your biggest purpose, your greatest authority, your biggest impact, and, and the most glory, right? And my righteousness will go before you. The glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. That's important because when you stick your neck out, aren't you always kind of looking over your shoulder? <laughs> afterwards now, then you'll call on the Lord and he'll answer you and he'll he'll say and you can cry and he'll say here I am remove the yoke from your midst the pointing of the finger all those people who traumatized you that's the forgiveness piece 
And um, it says, if, if you give yourself to the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then your light will rise in darkness, your gloom will be midday. The Lord will continually guide you and satisfy your desires in scorched places. It gives strength to your bones and you'll be a well-watered garden, blah, blah, blah. Here's the one I wanted to get to. And those from among you will rebuild the ancient ruins, will raise up age-old foundations, and you will be called, you will be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets in which to dwell. Okay? So that's where you're headed. That's where your trauma healing is going to take you into that place. And God has a way of when you get that and when you're committed to that, he has a way of, of putting his supernatural re-knitting of your soul together. And again, there are these incredible resources. There's the Emmanuel ministry. There's the Sozo ministry. There's Dave's book on healing, um, emotional healing. There are, are counselors and lovers and who are, that God is going to bring along the way. And your job is to say, yes, 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 I'm in, I'm in. Same thing. How can we think about this nationally? How can we think about this nationally? We think about America's purpose coming out of this absolute, just sort of scorched earth thing. How can we think about America becoming the restorer of the breach and the, and, the, and the restore of ancient dwellings in which to live. And when America is meant now to come into, a, into the, the um, to become the well-watered garden. America is meant to be the breadbasket for the nations of the, of the bread of life. And God is telling us, look, he's going to make his light break forth like the dawn. Our recovery is going to come forth speedily. I really do believe that. I believe we are going to rule and reign between now and November 3rd and through the inauguration. I believe we're going to get freer and freer and healder and healder. I believe we're going to impart that, right? And we're going to see our national, our national recovery break forth speedily. Why? Because that's how he rolls in people like you who've determined that's how you're going to live. Okay. And so, um, you know, God has this way of taking everything that was the worst of the worst and making us the most creative, the most resilient. And I believe that can be imparted. I, 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 we have an event coming this weekend where the enemy just meant to completely slam the atmosphere of my home. And I'll tell you right now, restorers of the breach are heading into that. And they're going to untraumatize our town and untraumatize our people. And I'm going to promise you that the things that look the absolute worst about the canvas of your life, the absolute worst about the canvas of your life are going to be the most interesting, the most impactful, and the most powerful. Look, it's not rocket surgery, okay? You, the problem with you people is most of you are pretty savvy already. You're all like, yeah, 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 I got that. I heard that. Oh, yeah, that's true. Oh, I know. We're so far ahead. I know. It's true. You're amazing. Do I Need I even say it? But somehow God draws among us because we are healing tribe, and we are influencers, and we are kingdom people, and we are being unmasked out of, out of the enemy's restrictions on our voice, our breath, our influence, and we are the lovers and healers, then doesn't it just make sense that in and among us are going to be drawn some people, new people that are just so traumatized. And by the way, Raylene, I got your lovely letter. Oh my gosh. Wow. There's somebody who's just determined to get healed her and healed her and more and more powerful. And I'm going to tell you that you're going to grow. You really are. You're going to go, Lord, whatever it takes me, whatever I have to do, where I have to be, who I have to talk to, whatever I have to surrender, one step at a time, I'm going to, um, I'm going to say yes, and I'm going to trust you. 
And I'm going to hang out with some people who really know how to, how to turn to, to, to repair the breach. And I'm going to learn how to repair the breach. That's what I'm going to do. You have nothing better to do with the rest of your life than get real healed and to impart that. And, uh, and I think it's really important, my friend, that with every step, as you overcome our national trauma, I feel, I feel it every time the subject comes up and the walls close in and the pressure increases. I feel that. And so what am I to do? I am to become creative. I am, I am to overcome, overcome with good, with love. I am to walk into every situation, in every store, in every place, and consciously impart healing I may not have even received yet. You can do that because in the spirit, you're a finished work. So everything you need in your new identity is already there. It just has to wind up here. Your spirit's done. I mean, I think you can grow it. I think you can move more out of it. But I mean, you're made righteous in Christ. It's settled. Wholeness is paid for. It's provided. You're one. You're 100 before the throne of God. Right? And you can pull out of that the healing you don't even have yet. When the Lord said to me, Julie, you realize now, don't you, that that person who really hurt you, you have authority to make or break their day, right? Like, I could withhold blessing. I could, I could walk in bitterness. I could rehearse the pain. I could live in that. I could let that pain just be memories of all the other times I got screwed and all the other times I got shamed. And I could live out of that and... And kind of just go, hey, you are so on your own. Uh, I am busy with my pain. Or the Lord said, you can be an advocate before my throne. And I promise when you pray for them and you release healing and forgiveness, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay attention to what you, you said and did. Because you've earned your stripes, my friend. And you know, when you know that you have that kind of power... In prayer, it's amazing because it'll get your mind off your own pain and it will accelerate your healing. Who has traumatized you the most deeply? What politician? What judge? Oh my gosh, we have been so screwed over in the courts, I can't even tell you. What judge? What church lady? What pastor? What father? What boyfriend? What friend? What teacher? Who screwed you over? Who left the biggest mark? Oh my gosh, your greatest authority is right there. Your greatest healing, your greatest glory, your greatest purpose, it's all right there. And the reality is, is once you live through a few of those deals where the cobra is right there and you survived, you start realizing the head games the enemy plays. You see already? Look, let me show you. Let me show you. I have no idea. This may not even be a planet when we're done. But I want to show you that right there, now we have some light going through. That's like, to me, the most interesting part of this whole canvas. That wound is going to make me the, more, the most creative I've ever been in this kind of you know, exploration. That right there is going to make me change everything about this canvas. So that little thing makes sense. And it tells the right story. Do you remember last year when I did this? Uh, not that I plan on hacking canvases every year. <laughs> but I took a canvas and I was really aggressive. It went, you know, probably like this across it. And that then became the center of a sunflower. And I literally then took tissue paper after I had stabilized it. And we talked about how God will stabilize you. God will stabilize you. And then begin to actually restore strength in unusual ways, even if it looks like a scar. And, and I actually had tissue paper full of glue that I put on there. And it looked like a big old ugly gunshot wound. Do you guys remember? It was a big brown circle. You can actually probably go if you, by the way, somebody asked me this. 
If you want to see previous scopes and see last summer's trauma scopes, they were pretty cool. Um, you just, on any scope person, okay, if you just hit their, their name, not just the name of the scope, but their name, it'll bring up their profile. And then you touch recents and you can scroll back. And I'm pretty sure that my trauma scopes are around from last year. And you can see that the, the big gaping slash that completely destabilized this canvas and took away its ability to have to handle any pressure or even brush strokes was stabilized with some duct tape and then I went in and stippled pieces of tissue paper all over it and then but I didn't tell you what you where I was headed I'm not even sure I knew and it looked literally like a big huge gunshot wound I mean like a like a hole from a bullet and it stuck up and it was dark brown it looked like poo and then from there I started drawing in the, I didn't even know how to do that kind of flower, but then I started researching sunflowers and researching that actually, that center part of any flower is its reproductive system. And so that gaping, destabilizing, horrifying wound became the, the fertilized reproductive system of the flower, the sunflower, and I found out how amazing sunflowers are. <coughs> sunflowers can be used to detoxify things out of the earth like if there was radiation you can actually plant sunflowers into radiated earth and they will suck the radiation right out isn't that crazy do you get where I'm going do you get this all right I don't know where we're headed but it's gonna make you and me so creative so relevant and we're going to be the repairs it's time to make reparations but not in the way the enemy does it, through shame and guilt and punishment and vengeance. We are going to be those repairers of the breach, not only for ourselves, for our nation. Can you say that with me right now? Just as a, uh, <clears throat> a prayer, I'm going to say, <clears throat> Lord, right now we decree and declare you're satisfying our desires and the deep desire of our nation continually guiding us, satisfying us in scorched places. Right now we just release in Jesus' name the reality that people who are in scorched, traumatic places right now, you're pouring out <coughs> the satisf satisfaction of, of you knowing and meeting their desires right now. You're giving strength to our national bones. We will be a well-watered garden, a spring whose waters do not fail. And those from among us, the remnant here in the United States and the nations. We rebuild the ancient ruins. America's ancient ruins are being rebuilt. We're going to do it. We're going to be the ones to do it. We're already doing it now. And we will raise up the age-old foundations. We will. We are. We declare it. And we are going to be called the repairers of the breach, the divide, the division the mask, no mask, the race thing, the left, the right, the up, the down, 